why women don't like tech, or we can reframe it, uh, why most of this room is filled with men, and, we are, and generally why most of the teams in tech companies and tech companies and um, everything related to tech is generally uh, full of men. Uh, first, I want to tell you that it wasn't always like this. Uh, so, as uh, just to um, so the orange line is uh, students of the computer science, and the other lines are medical school, law school, and physical sciences. And this graph represents the percentage of women that were enrolling into these sciences. And as you see, everywhere, everywhere, every other group is and line is growing. So, uh, what's happening, and what happened to the computer science? at this particular moment, uh, so it was in the 80s, marketing happened. So basically that was the first time that com uh, computers were actually entering places of our work and then later places where we live. And we were promoting it usually as it's a great thing that men can use to work on or that boys can use to play with. And then uh, when even later on, when uh, boys were growing up uh, in family, uh, in, for example, houses that bought a computer for a boy to play, then when that generation was starting to enroll to university, uh, girls or women uh, didn't feel like they have the prior knowledge and they, that they used computers, and then boys did, and that's how we ended up in this situation. And I would say that we are still in it. It's something, it, it's, this is, uh, I'm not blaming this, just to be sure, it's just portraying uh, the, the situation and continuing the narrative. So uh, from pop culture to, we talked about AI, and this is something great that UNDP uh, lab in Serbia did. So I just took their photos and their analysis, but basically it's uh, something that we all assume that tech is something that's meant for generally that men like and that it's meant for our boys and our men. Uh, and it's obviously um, true because uh, a lot of data uh, and a lot of researchers show that girls uh, lose interest in tech starting the age of six. Uh, and one of the reasons uh, why it's like that is that because we still portray technology from their very, very early ages as something that's uh, dominantly meant for boys. So for example, uh, this is how tech toys generally look like. These are the best-selling uh, robotics toys that you can find on Amazon. And there is, uh, for me, this is also one interesting topic when it comes to girls' education uh, in tech because it's one of the rare ones where, when it comes to tech, where science and the researchers have moved further than the private sector and companies in the sense that they did a lot of analysis on what's happening and why it's happening. And one of the things is that, what I just showed you, this is not something girls generally play with. Uh, and it's not something that one often girls would uh, go to and not what people will buy to girls. Uh, and generally there are differences in uh, how majority of boys and girls play and what they like to do and then uh, whether it's natural or taught or whatever, they're, they're, uh, we believe that there should be a variety. And then the other thing is that uh, a lot of girls don't want to be the only girl in a in this course, in this group, and that's something that they try, again, majority of them to avoid, and that's one of the reasons why you can often see um, girls not being part of those camps, boot camps, and uh, general. So, um, for me, it's always interesting because I really believe, and uh, I worked with so many uh, different uh, innovators and technology makers and technology is changing every aspect of what we do and how we work and in which aspects it's work and it's so diverse uh, and it's so colorful and I'm still uh, shocked how when we teach our kids about it we just use uh, some same uh, segments and this is the reason why we are stuck with these low numbers, even though we always talk how girls should like uh, 
uh, tech too, and that now the technology sector and uh, our future and all the economies in the world need more programmers or engineers, data scientists, and in order to have them more, we need to have girls as well do it, but it's obviously not working and, um, well, okay. So I'm not trying to say that we need to artificially bring women in and tell them, come on, it, this is your field. Uh, the only po point I'm trying to make is that we just, uh, let's show the full color palette instead of just some segments uh, and try to not foster the stereotypes that we have uh, in our, uh, when, when it comes to understanding tech, presenting tech and talking about tech. Um, have you heard about something that's called stereotype threat? It's also, yeah, awesome. <laughs> uh, but it's, uh, it's a concept and uh, it's proven on different topics, but let's use the one uh, when it comes to math. Uh, it's something that, for example, and it's related also to computer science, that if girls think that computer science is not from them, they tend to opt out of it in order uh, not to prove that this stereotype is right. So they don't want to be told, I told you so. So that's something that stereotype threat then affects uh, whether they go into the field and how actually not just girls, any other minorities or any other stereotype, how it affects it. Uh, this is just one uh, self-promotion thing. So if you want to see the links to the research, you can check it here. And also if you have a daughter, maybe um, you'll also uh, find this newsletter interesting because we are talking exactly about these topics and trying to find ways and show you ways how you can be the one who is talking and uh, showing the tech in its full colors and its full diversity. And uh, last, uh, because I don't want to talk only about uh, girls because most of the women here uh, are already in tech. Uh, most of the men here work with women in tech. Most of the men and women lead teams with both men and women in teams. So let's just um, say another thing the data is clear about. Uh, and then that we often, first of all, when I read the data, I was also like, no, it's awesome. It's not like that. But uh, whoever loves data, I'm sure most of these people, in the, or most of the people in the room who came to listen about AI will uh, understand the data. But basically, even in tech, uh, women climb the career ladder much slower. So only 10% of executive positions, and there is luckily more than 10% women working in tech. Uh, it's interesting for me, this was really an eye-opener, and uh, this is just data for Serbia, uh, but gender gap in tech is larger than gender gap in general economy. And one positive thing, once you have a woman leader, then uh, there are uh, women advance faster and better. So uh, I don't want to be, uh, I know myself I was there and I did talk about it often. So usually we say, well, this is the data, but it's uh, not happening. Uh, unfortunately, it's happening. Uh, it might not happen uh, and women start to notice it usually once they uh, advance further in the career, like when they're working for five years in the company or 10 years in, in the company when they become uh, moms. So these are the situations when women usually notice it and then sometimes uh, it can be too late to uh, make an action. And for the women in this room, uh, also what data shows uh, is that two things are important to avoid this uh, situation. One is change your especially first job uh, so uh, once uh, women tend to be more loyal uh, to companies and then tend to stay too long on the first job and then the data shows that it affects both, both, both their salary and the way uh, career growth. Uh, and carefully choose employer. Not all employers are the same. Some do care and do pay attention to allowing equal opportunities and then some are boys clubs. So pay attention where you go. Thanks. <laughs> uh, firstly, thank you. And secondly, I have a question. It's about your personal opinion. But usually, when you have a discussion with ChatGPT, uh, with what kind of gender type do you read the answer? Feminine or masculine? Uh, 
uh, with what gender type do I? Do you read the answer? So for you, ChatGPT has feminine uh -huh. voice or masculine voice? Uh, uh, well, it's difficult because in Serbian, somehow we, the way we talk about the chat GPT is a he. So for me, it's a masculine voice. I don't know, what about who also thinks it's a man? I'm really interested. Okay, and uh, <laughs> who thinks it's a woman? Okay. There's some men there. <laughs> I mean a majority. <laughs> Good. Cool. Any other questions? Uh, thank you very much, Zoya. So I'm very interested. Um, you said that the BS has actually started at age of six when girls don't get the toys boys get. So I would like to know what is the best practice to change it? What would be your suggestion on it? So you remember the, the link I gave you? It's, uh it's not there anymore, but uh, really there's a lot of things that uh, people can do. Um, first, uh, one of the things they always, uh, the research shows that, for example, the role of a mother is extremely important in how girl, girls build growth man mindset and how they respond to stereotypes. And what's interesting is that it's completely irrelevant, for example, when we talk about tech, is whether the mom is in tech or not. So if the mom believes that girl is, that she can do tech and that, that it's for her, then it influences um, her career path uh, a lot. And then uh, luckily now there are re a bunch of resources. There are cool children books about Ada Lovelace, about girls programmers. Uh, there are uh, coding schools. And what was also showed, I would always remind people that girls don't like to be the only girls in the group. So whenever you can, uh, or for all of those uh, activities, whether it's tech or it's you want your girl to try and play soccer, it's whatever, but try to find a f girlfriend who would make her company so they don't feel completely alone uh, in that segment. It's, it's important to them at that age. Thank you very much for that. I would like to just uh, thank you because that's so true. I am actually an uh, IT or cyber school director, uh, and it's actually for children age from six to uh, 14 years old, so that's very true, actually. Cool. And we gave scholarships to girls so that they can join uh, the groups and there can be more gr girls in the groups because that's a very true statement awesome. that now girls don't do like to be... Uh, Two girls for the price of one. <laughs> <laughs> no, they all go for free, uh, okay, the yeah. ones that got the scholarships. Cool, cool. But yeah, a cool idea. We have a, another question right here. Oh, I think this just lady was first. Hello, Zoya. Yeah, and the lady is Anna, and Zoya knows me. We know each other from the IT scene in Belgrade. So I will use this opportunity to ask her to kind of summarize uh, since she has extensive experience with the uh, Serbian IT scene. You're sort of a veteran, I'd say. <laughs> and uh, if you can just give us, uh, because there are many people who are visiting or uh, here for not such a long time, uh, give us a summary of your experience of from the point when you started, how it changed uh, and in just like <laughs> I suggest it be a, diff a, a separate talk, a separate, okay. but uh, thanks for that. I really, uh, um, I think that even for Serbians in the room, it's always good for us to remind how small we were 10 years ago and how, even though we are still small, how things change. So I'm, uh, and I'm really happy that we have so many new people in, the, in our tech community who will all only help us grow even faster. So. I think this is another topic I want something to say. So in Yandex, uh, <laughs> sorry, uh, we have Yandex GPT. And in our Lisa, we have Yandex GPT, and it's a female voice. So there is, for GPT, it can be a female. <laughs> All right, we have also Marco. I think that will be our last question. We'll see. Last question. Make it a good one. Yes. Uh, I'll, I'll try. So. Uh, there's there's a lot of jobs in tech and uh, in some areas like uh, sysadmins, I'm yet to meet a, a female sysadmin. 
uh, and for instance, in in uh, things like uh, you know business intelligence, even data science, there's many more girls. Yeah. yeah. So I'd like just to to get some comment from you about why why the disparity. Um, okay, just uh, one. This is uh, good. Uh, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> it's hard. Uh, I think that. Uh, you are absolutely right. There's different uh, jobs in tech. And I don't think that everyone should program. Uh, also, when you were talking at this panel before, what will be, what professions will be disrupted thanks to AI, I think programming might be one of them as well. So in that yes. sense, uh, I think that um, just uh, being open to tech uh, to new new technology, to what, what comes next, and understanding it. I really liked. Uh, I read it somewhere. So, uh, but uh, every job is a tech job, and it's really get, we are really getting there. So in that sense, I heard, I think it's really important uh, not to lose women and girls on the way of us transforming and digitalizing everything in our economy. And then I also think that that question that you asked about CIS uh, for data science, I think in Serbia there's more women. I don't think it's internationally that much, but it's because we have so many women in math. And I think uh, it's uh, I, I, uh, there's even research to show it's related to our communism past. Like we have a lot of women civil engineers, and we don't uh, unlike in America where it's 95% men. So in that sense, um, this we. It wasn't that popular during communism, so we just adopted the Western uh, trend. Okay, we have one final question for equality purposes. We have another guy question all the way in the back. We have to be fair today. Yeah, 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 no problem. I thought I need to speed things up. Hello, everyone. Oh, oh okay. Zoya, I listened to you in multiple events over the past couple of years, and your voice is very strong. Now, when I saw this topic, I never thought about this before, so I was like, all right. It kind of makes sense, but I want to know, how did you avoid all these stereotypes, uh, even like probably 10 years ago when startups and tech wasn't even a big thing in Serbia, and then still yet you are here tonight talking about this, and obviously you care a lot, so I'm just interested, how did you as a girl and a woman avoid those stereotypes and fall in love with tech and survive and build this strong voice that you have today? Thank you. Uh, thanks for the question. Uh, I'm not sure I know the answer, but uh, I, I, somebody did make me reflect uh, on my path uh, recently, and I think one of the biggest things is that I was supported during childhood, and I think it's, it mainly came from my parents, that my voice is important and that I should voice my opinion, no matter how small I was. And uh, I think that that, I, I was often talking, uh, like 10 years ago, I, I can't even watch some of the videos probably, because I would never allow that myself, uh, a version to, to speak the way, but obviously there was something in me that I thought uh, I'm smart enough. So I think that that's, um, and I really, I, I don't regret it. I just think that it's maybe I s speak louder, uh, and uh, this is just uh, a reminder that all of us have do have something to say. And I think that I would really like that not on this topic, but generally on all the topics that I spoke about, and even back then when I spoke about the tech and startups, I would have really loved if there were more people who were open to talk at that time. Cool. Thank you so much.